The field of manufacturing and production was never a profitable one. It took many expensive skilled workers and sometimes even several days for you to be able to buy that shiny new blender from the supermarket. It was slow, time consuming, and overall very inefficient, no matter the product. But over the course of several decades, manufacturing went from a low profiting burden to a multi-billion dollar industry. And the solution was very simple, eliminating the human. Mankind has always made products by hand, and didn't know any other way to do it. So when the industry of mass production started to boom in the early 1900s, this was a big issue. The process was too slow and expensive to have dozens of people working on one product before it was able to be shipped to a store, but we did it anyway, and this made products on shelves cost a whole lot more than they should have. But there were other issues as well. Humans made mistakes, and mistakes mean a product won't work properly, and that means wasted money. Employees also got tired, they needed to sleep, eat, and rest, meaning less time for work. And worst of all, in many situations, the workplace was not safe or toxic, and workers sometimes got sick or injured. But in a few decades, this all changed. Robots in manufacturing didn't start to appear until the late 50s. When pioneers, such as George Devil, saw the blunder that was the industrial manufacturing system. He created the first robot to be used in a manufacturing setting, one that could pick up objects and move them with ease. Fast forward 30 years, when major production companies started adopting robotic arm design by Takeo Kanadi, and later smart adaptable robots entered the workforce. Today. Every single company involved in mass production has all sorts of robots, from robotic arms that produce, assemble, and even paint, to automated robots that move massive amounts of raw materials that humans would have difficulty moving. Despite the fact that robotics manufacturing is a giant leap forward in mass production, there are many that disagree with it and go as far as to protest against the technology. The rise of popularity in these machines has reduced the demand for workers to a status that is almost considered useless. This is simply because robots are more efficient, precise, and are overall cheaper. This leads to thousands of people losing their jobs. While robots are good for the company profit, the loss of humans in the workforce has detrimental effect on the national economy and poverty as certain people rely on industrial factory jobs as income. And the truth is that it's not hard for robots to beat humans when it comes to repetitive work. In an article by FT Magazine, a Chinese sink foundry replaced 140 full-time workers with 9 robots. And lots of other production factories all across the nation are doing the same thing. This has caused an uproar with the workers and many protested against the decisions made by the owners. Production robots have been a great demonstration of some of the applications these machines are being applied to. They are faster, stronger, cheaper, and more efficient than humans will ever be. But despite the fact that some people think there is no reason for them to fully take over the workforce, industrial robots are here to stay. And with nuke tech being created at such a fast pace, it is likely we will see them being used more and more. As Stowe Boyd, lead researcher at Gagawan Research said, the central question for 2025 will be, what are people for in a world that does not need their labor and where only a minority are needed to guide the bot-based economy? Um, um, idea has always been that the robots will take over the 3D, dirty, dull, and dangerous uh, jobs. 
And I think that that's still kind of like the dream. But w what I think is interesting is that now with uh, all other services, you know, like with new materials also, with the way of how we can process the data fast and so on, I think that we will be seeing applications that we do not necessarily can envision yet today, just because there will be like infrastructural change, not only in industrial setups, but also there will be uh, infrastructural change in the society.